Hello to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's Tuesday uh, evening, I'm just uh, going on a bushwalk just to uh, take some time out and I thought it would be a good idea just to do a book summary. So today's book summary that I'm going to do as we walk and talk is entitled Boundaries. Boundaries, and it's by an author named Henry Cloud. What a wonderful topic to talk about on a day like today, especially <laughs> since we've been living in lockdown for the past uh, three months. It's been a long time where our boundaries have been restricted. How, depending on where you live, your LGA will determine uh, where, you, where you go, who you, can, uh, who you can catch up with, what work you can do, and whether or not you need to be vaccinated or not vaccinated in order to get back to work. It's been an interesting journey and a unique time in everybody's life um, this is a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic. Um, nobody's been through this before, and chances are nobody will ever have to go through it ever again. But uh, now we're going through it, and we're learning as we're going. And uh, it's been a struggle for some. It's been a little bit easier for others. But uh, we've all learned. We've all learned something about ourselves. What makes us tick? What, what makes us tick? Should I say? And also, what makes other people tick, as well. So let's continue and do a walk and talk. It's getting late in the day. The sun's going down. It'll be dark in about half an hour. So I need to get down to the pond and back to my car. Um, before it gets too dark. So the author here kicks off with a quote. So Henry, Henry, Henry Cloud kicks off with an interesting quote where he says, if you continue to blame other people for making you feel guilty, they still have power over you and you are saying that you will only feel good when they stop doing that. You are giving them control of your life. So by, it's a very interesting point this one here. So by blaming others for the things that you can't do in life or the problems that you have inherited in life, basically means that you're giving, you're handing over control of your life to third parties. So the immediate call to action that uh, Henry Cloud um, provides us is to stop blaming others, other people, for the situation, for the challenges, for the problems that you may be experiencing. And by doing this, it's a liberating um, effect that you have on your life. By stopping the blaming, you stop becoming a victim. And by stopping becoming a victim, means that you can all of a sudden start to think about what you can do to be the, uh, the hero, the hero in your life. The person who can um, find solutions as opposed to finding fault all the time. And uh, we go on to say, and for those of us who are parents and grandparents, I guess we learn at a very early stage in that responsibility that unless you give or create limitations and boundaries for the people around you, your children, um, your parents, um, friends and family. If 
you don't create limits and boundaries, then you're going to spend most of your time um, marching to their drumbeat as opposed to living your life with your family the way you want to. Because as we all know, when you see children and adults as well, if you live a life without boundaries, it can become very draining. It can become very, very draining indeed. Because you need to consider um, that without boundaries, then you just keep on doing things without knowing what you're doing and why you're doing it, just because you can. But the author here talks about living with purpose, living a life with purpose, and to consider, for each and every one of us, to consider having some healthy boundaries in our lives. Healthy boundaries for your emotional and spiritual health. Because uh, one person once said years ago, and my wife keeps on using this quote, and she loves it as well, is that we all need to build a moat around our sanity. We all need to protect our sanity. So that's our spiritual health, our mental health, and even our physical health as well. We need to build a moat to protect ourselves and to set boundaries. Otherwise, we're going to be run ragged by life because life will just keep on taking. Your family will keep on taking from you. Your friends, your work, your children, your grandchildren will keep on taking. But it's up to you to set the boundaries. It's up to you to... Um, put a lock on the door and to say no and to only allow the things that create value and create um, fulfillment for you according to you, the way you want to live your life. So the author then, then goes on and kicks off with the first formal point from this book where he says that it's an act of kindness to yourself and to those around you to set boundaries. You're being fair to yourself, but you're also being fair to others because others know where your limits are and don't continue to test your limits only to end up um, getting ripped apart when you've finally had enough of them pushing and uh, pulling you in a way which uh, you can no longer, um, 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 I guess, provide and, and deliver outcomes to. The author says that personal boundaries, and this is an important one for young people as well, personal boundaries are necessary for protecting emotional emotions and your spirit. So it's important to protect, as we said before, your emotional and spiritual um, realm. Because unlike physical boundaries, the author here makes a, um, a distinction. Unlike physical boundaries, others can't see your values. Now, with physical boundaries, people can basically tell you know, what your values are or or what that boundary is, or what you stand for. But when it comes to your spirituality, and your, um, and your mind, and your, the way you think, unless you express it, unless you set it in black and white, then people don't know where you stand, and what your values are. So the way we do it, according to Henry Cloud, is we set boundaries by taking ownership of our wants, our needs, and our feelings. We are not solely responsible 
for other people's boundaries. So all we can do is to manage and set our own boundaries and other people can do whatever they want regarding their boundaries. But if you want peace of mind, if you want to, uh, to be comfortable and to uh, um, provide yourself with a, an opportunity to have a life that you have control over, then it's up to you to do whatever you need to do to set your boundaries and to live within those boundaries. The author then goes on to say that it, it can be hard to set boundaries, but regardless of how hard it is, it will make your life better. Not only will it make your life better, but according to the author here, he says that it will make your life much, much better. So it's important to consider the importance of setting boundaries because it has a massive, massive impact on your life. And if it has a massive impact on your life, then lo and behold, it will have a massive impact on other people's life around you. We've got to stop making excuses, according to the author, for other people. Because eventually, you will get fed up with them and resent them. Um, and you will lose and they will lose. So what the author here is saying is that we've got to stop making excuses for those around us. Uh, bad behaviour is bad behaviour. So what the author is saying here is that we need to uh, step in and just do what we need to do, set the boundary and not worry too much about how it impacts others around us. Because if we don't set boundaries, as we said before, sooner or later, we will get sick of them. And sadly, they will get sick of us. And that's not what we want because uh, it's lose-lose, according to the author. Um, a few more points here that the author makes, which are really, really interesting. Don't let people get away with jokes at your expense. I know it's easy. It's easy just to um, let people get away with the, uh, the one-liners, the jokes. But um, what it does is, um, and as the Greeks say, dinis aformi. It means that you give permission to somebody else to treat you badly by letting them get away with things that uh, don't make you feel good or don't allow you to express yourself in the way you want to express it. You know, we don't want people to um, put words into our mouths or misrep misrepresent who we are and what we do with um, their, their, their giveaway lines, their one-liners or the jokes that they have that, that are at, at our expense. Because if it's not something which is said to, um, that is respectful for us, then it could be damaging. And we need to manage and protect our, our uh, reputation at all costs. So, um, So learn how to love and value yourself is another beautiful point which comes out of this book. Um, you've got to put yourself first. You've got to put yourself ahead of your family, ahead of your partner, ahead of everybody else. You need to build yourself up. You need to build yourself up by loving yourself and valuing yourself. And when our boundaries are, are violated, regularly, we start to treat ourselves like others treat us. This is a very important point. It's a very powerful point. If you don't manage your reputation, if you don't manage your brand, 
then sooner or later you will end up being or, or, or expressing the brand that other people have of, of you. You'll end up expressing the expectations, the lowly expectations that others foist upon you. So for all the young people out there, you've got to understand, don't let people say bad things about you. Stick up for yourself. Because if you don't stick up for yourself, you'll end up being who they say you are. It's really, really, <laughs> really important. And um, I'm glad I'm doing this book summary today because I'm sure it's going to help lots and lots of people. And the way we do it is we start small. We don't start big. Start small and see the difference that it makes um, and uh, look at all the incremental improvements that it does in your life. And the last point, the last formal point to come out of this book, uh, that boundaries are essential for both your personal life and your work life. And we're different people at work. We're different people at home. We're different people in our communities. You know, we can be different people. There's nothing wrong with being different in each of your different social environments. You know, we, uh, we've got different roles. We've got different responsibilities. And we can express ourselves according to each of those roles and responsibilities. So there's nothing wrong with... Um, with uh, being different in different groups. You don't have to be the same person. So when you go to the football, you're allowed to be a bit of a, a, bit of a rebel. You're allowed to shout, you're allowed to carry on. You're allowed to uh, express your uh, animated views. You know, whereas if you're in a church setting, for example, it's a little bit different. So you, we need to have you know, different expressions for our different roles in different environments. But uh, as the author here mentions to us, it's hard and tricky to assess or assert boundaries in a marriage or close friendships. Now, I've been married now... Uh, what is it, 38 years. I've been married 38 years and I've been with Paula Will over 40 years. So it's really, really hard for me or anybody to assert their boundaries in a marriage because over time those boundaries have been established and they're basically now in concrete. And it's also the same with our friendships. You know, you can't assert new boundaries in old friendships. And that's why a lot of friendships fall apart. Because the reality is, is that we're constantly changing. We're con constantly growing and developing. And we're improving. We're becoming bigger and better in some ways and possibly worse in other ways. But sometimes our friendships, our families, want to hold us back. They want us to be little Jimmy. They want us to be the guy in high school. They want us to be the trainee at work, even though that was 20 years ago. So we've got to understand that it's hard to assert new boundaries or different boundaries in established relationships. But unless you can do it subtly, slowly and maturely, but also to invite your friends and family to grow and develop as well. Listen to them, listen to what their needs are and uh, try and be the person, the partner in their growth and development. You know, you know people grow. You know, our nieces become adults. They can teach us things. You know? <laughs> You know, the roles are reversed at some point in time. Our children grow up. You know, my children are over 30 now. My eldest daughter's got her children. 
my youngest daughter's got her career and her husband, and she's working on starting a family as well. They're adults. They probably know more about life than what I do, especially in today's environment. So what we need to do is loosen the, uh, loosen the apron strings so that our children, our families, our work peers can grow and develop. And they may grow and develop to a point where they no longer need us. So be it. But, uh, you know, allow them to assert new boundaries in our existing relationships without getting your nose out of joint, I guess is the important point. Because we all get offended sometimes when people want to change and um, it doesn't suit us, but we need to help other people grow and develop. So uh, where are we up to now? Uh, most relationships are made up of a, uh, a controller and a compliant person. Wow, how powerful is this? So in every relationship, there's a person who controls the relationship and one who is compliant. If you get two controllers together, you get fireworks. You know that. And if you get two compliant people together, then you don't get very much progress. So I guess there needs to be a, a bit of a dance, a dance of uh, growth and development where people can work together to uh, grow and develop. And as we said here, to understand that, you know, within, within a relationship, there's a person who's a controller. If you want to try and control the controller, then you're going to have problems um, unless they want to work with you and to swap the roles. You know, a mature couple, a mature family um, takes take turns at leading and enable um, joint decision-making or alternate decision-making on different projects. Um, it all comes through communication, I guess, is the bottom line. Um, the next point here is that um, different people have got different chemistry levels and different energy levels uh, and we need to set boundaries. I'm a uh, sort of person who's an early morning person. I want to do things in the morning. My wife is more of a, a night person. So... <laughs> It's really, really hard for me to push my energy onto my wife in the morning and for my wife to push her energy on me uh, throughout the day. So we need to understand that, that different people have got different energy levels and different chemistry levels. So, uh, and the other thing also we need to understand is that, and we've all been through this, I've been through this, I've worked for many top tier firms throughout my career and it's really really hard really really hard to set boundaries in a work environment because you know you've got a manager you've got a team you've got all these other people and usually when we're first starting our careers or when we're in our careers you know we're married so we've got a, a wife or a husband we've got parents We've got social scene, social events. Sometimes we'll have children. And our life has so many, so many things happening at the same time. And it's really, really hard to set boundaries at work to be able to manage all the other things happening in your life. You can't really tell the director that you can't do that presentation because uh, you've got to go to a party and vice versa. So there's um, points along the way where we can have some issues and some serious problems. But that's where a, uh, a couple need to work together to make sure that they are able to um, understand 
that there is a give and take in a work environment that they need to respect and uh, take into consideration. The other thing also is that um, the last points to come out of this book is that birthrights, uh, sorry, boundaries are your birthright and they're a human right as well. Each and every one of us have the right to choose our decisions and make choices in our lives. We don't have to do what other people want us to do. But you also need to understand is that with each choice, with each, with each, each decision that we make, there are also consequences. First, second and third level consequences that come with those decisions that we need to uh, traverse, manage and live by. And the final points here is that at the end of the day, we need to learn and meet, need to become more adept at managing the people around us so that we can get the things done. We can set the boundaries in a subtle way. You don't have to be hard headed, rude, abusive about how you go about setting your boundaries, but you need to do it in a way which is um, positive and will um, maintain the longer term relationship. Um, and be careful, because as we said, for those people who don't set boundaries, others around them will just keep on taking and taking and taking. You don't set your boundaries, other people will uh, take advantage of that lack of boundary setting. And I think that's about it. So thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club on this beautiful Tuesday uh, afternoon. I've still got another kilometre to walk. As you can see, it's getting dark. I hope to make it through the uh, bush and see where I'm going. But uh, thank you very much for joining me and we'll chat again. So this is my second book summary on Jim's 5am Club after about three months or more of uh, taking it easy. And I've got plenty that I've prepared and uh, I'll be delivering over the next, um, I guess, year or so. So I look forward to chatting again. Take care, yasas, and happy Tuesday night. Bye for now.